Okay, so now we are ready for our next, uh, next keynote. So I'd like to introduce you to you, a serial entrepreneur, highly, highly successful serial entrepreneur, one of the first few Indian Americans, or in, uh, people of Indian origin, who took, a public, uh, who took a company public here in the US. The father of Thai, the, one of the founders of Thai, and of course, a mentoring guru, and that is Kanwal Reiki. So next is Kanwal Reiki, may I invite? Uh, uh, <laughs> Good afternoon. Good. Yeah. So we are, this many people are still here, right? At, uh, so there must be something about this, this conference. So I saw the hands you know, <coughs> this morning. Yeah, most of you are either entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs, right? Is that still true? <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the odds of success for an entrepreneur are very low very low, uh, no more than one to two percent of population at large will succeed as an entrepreneur. Two percent in the countries which are very entrepreneurial like US, and maybe one percent or less you know, in countries like Japan, you know, which is not very entrepreneurial. You know, Japan is a lot more focused on being manage, managerial as a society. So two percent arts are not the arts that you will bet on normally if you're a gremlin type, you know, and uh, one in 50 yards, right? Yeah. And if you tell your parents, you know, that you want to be an entrepreneur, you probably will not, yeah, get a reception, yeah, that you would want to see. You know, you know, the parents, by the way, you know, especially Indian parents, you know, emphasis is on settle down. Yeah, you're not a child anymore. Yeah. Be responsible, yeah. And yeah, the notion of uh, entrepreneur is being irresponsible, being not settled down, is very unsettling for the moms. You know, no mother says, you know, you know beta entrepreneur bono. <laughs> yeah, son become an entrepreneur. Yeah, and uh, so so you will not see any encouragement from outside. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, your friends will very quickly disown you because you're no fun anymore. You, know, you don't have time to have a beer or go see a movie or watch football. You know, you're always busy doing whatever you do. You know, so your friends start to you know, shun you very quickly. Because, uh, you know, so it's something you know, which has a very low odds, you know, very little encouragement from outside. If you're married, your spouse will be not very happy. You know, because, you know, that means no paycheck, you know, and, uh, you, know, and you know, a little bit of uh, suffering, you know, that you know, she doesn't relish. <laughs> and so even spouses are, are you, know, some, you know, they like stable, you know, instead of because, you know, young children, you know, they need to be taken care of and mortgage needs to be paid and all that. So it becomes a very, very lonely situation. And uh, people have to dig deep inside and come up with reason, you know, why should they leave their well-paying job for such a low odds in life? Yeah, and so something has to drive you from inside. There has to be some fire. And, and uh, so I'll tell you my story in a minute, you know, you know, and, you know, you know what it took. But the story is not that bad. If you leave your job, a stable job, and sustain your dream maybe six months to a year without a paycheck. Your arts improve tenfold overnight. You know, because you are now part of that self-selected 10% of the people who take that first step. The 90% of the people opt out right away. Yeah. You know, it's not for them. And now you're part of the select 10% and one to two percent of the population at large becomes 10 to 20 percent in that group and those are not the bad odds now they're not the bad odds because if you do succeed 
is set for life. Upside is unlimited. You know, downside is, you know, you go back and get the job. You know. So downside is very limited, really. You, know, you last maybe a year or two worth of salary. So, so you know, th that's the magic. The first step is the hardest step, but once you take that step, you know, your odds improve uh, pretty rapidly. If you're 20% out of success, you try three times, it's better than 50% odds. You know, but if you have to try five times, you know, then you should uh, look in the mirror and say, hmm, you know, is that me or something, right? <laughs> yeah, so entrepreneurs have to be intellectually very honest. You know, that's the hallmark of an entrepreneur. Because the only person you'll be fooling will be yourself. And, and uh, you know, because everybody else are, are already has written you off. And by the way, you know, when, when you do succeed and emerge on the other end as a successful person, you know, your mom always knew your son was going to do, you know, was going to succeed, even though she was against it, and your wife, you know, you know, you know, she was there for you, <laughs> even though she opposed it, and your friends always uh, you know, knew that you were somebody special. So, you know, so when you emerge on the other end as, as a winner, everybody loves you. But uh, if you emerge on the other end as a, as a loser, you know, people knew that you were always a loser. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, know, it's a, you have to be very intellectually honest with us. You know, the arts are against it. You know, the, there's no encouragement, and you have to dig in deep inside and sustain yourself. Because, you know, so my story goes like this. Very successful engineer. You know, very, you know, reached the highest ranks you know, in my job. You know, you know, back in 1980, I was making $75,000 a year. Back then, $75,000 a year, you know, it's like making, you know, maybe three hundred fifty, four hundred thousand dollars a year right now. You know, rupee, I mean, dollar has <laughs> depreciated a lot since then. You know, and that was a top salary for a, for a working engineer. You know, nice house, you know, a couple of cars, two young children, you know, very happy, you know, household. And so, you know, Silicon Valley, you, know, you always are restless if you're not an entrepreneur because, you know, you, you feel that you're less than special. You know, entrepreneurs are the special breed in Silicon Valley. Some of you know you're you're not you know, you're not uh, yeah top notch yeah top notch I should be entrepreneurs so I I had reached the highest ranks of you know, technical ladder there was nothing else nowhere else to go because uh, everybody ahead of me was uh, into Amway and things like that you know to make money on the side. And you know, I, I was only 34, 35 at the time. He says, boy, you know, I have peaked at age 35. You know, and uh, you know, I have to look forward to Amway or something like that. You know, and the, back then there was this thing called jet flight. You know, one of the spongy steam, you know, you know, people holding those uh, jet air flight parties you know, where you know, people bring in $1,000 and you know, the winner gets and then he starts his own jet flight. Yeah, you know, you know, yeah, all these guys were talking about these things, and they really scared me as a person. And then I saw in news that uh, there was a new startup company called Altos Computers. And you know, if you are you know, my age, you probably knew Altos was one of the original hot pots, you know, computer. You know, sort of around the time Apple was being formed, you know, Z80-based machine, you know, CPM. I was selling like a hot cakes. And I saw the news, you know, the founder of the Altos was it by, you know, I'll change the name slightly, you know, I, but uh, you know, David Jackson. Yeah, and uh, then I remember this. There was a David Jackson who worked for me you know, uh, at, at you know, my, my job. You know, he, he was an immigrant from England. You know, he was a pretty you know, decent engineer, but he was no IIT. And you know, for, for you guys uh, who know what IITs are, you know, the IITs are supposed to be smartest people around. And you know, he was, you know, and then I you know, did some research, and it was the same David Jackson. And it really hit me that David Jackson, you know, who was in my lab you know, as, a, as a test engineer, you know, who was an immigrant from England, has become an entrepreneur. And here I am, you know, yes, yes, stuck as a lifer at the job I had been there 10 years, was a defense contractor. You know, you know, we, you know, we were doing the flight simulators. And I had all the titles, you know, the senior principal engineer, whatever, you know, if you call it, you know, yeah, I had uh, all sorts of you know, honors and patents. And, but David Jackson had become an entrepreneur, and I was here, and that thing started to eat at me. Just couldn't sleep, you know, a couple of nights. 
you know, what's the matter with me? Why am I, you know, you know, stuck here at this job, you know, when there's a world out there? So my wife started to, uh, you know, notice that. And she says, what's, what's the matter with you? You, know, you're, you, know, you're, you are such a happy person. What's happening to you? Something is eating at you. And, and she says, am I making you unhappy? I said, no, 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 no. Nothing to do with you, dear. It's that guy, David Jackson, who's making me unhappy. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, I got totally destabilized as a person. And after you know, a few weeks, my wife you know, told her, I want to quit my job. I want to be, be an entrepreneur. And she said, quit your job. We are so well set. We have a nice house. We have a mortgage. We have two young children. We have you know, two cars. Am I making you unhappy? No, no, no. you're not making me unhappy. You know, it's, it's a matter of, uh, you know, now you know, me feeling you know, that I have to be out there and, and try my own hand. So entrepreneurs uh, have to destabilize themselves somehow. You know, you have to, they have to find their David Jacksons because you have to now prepare to step out of your comfort zone. The problem with the comfort zone is that you get very stagnant very quickly. You know, you, you know, you take photos on here, now, this project, you know, this deadline, you know, and it's very comforting, you know, set up, you know, and the paycheck is coming, but the time is passing you by. And, you know, so, you know, you got to find a way to step out of your comfort zone, getting destabilized by something in life. It, this could be voluntary, you know, destabilization, you know, you know which happened in my case, but it could be involuntary also. You know, you get laid off, you know, in your mid 30s, late 30s, then you go through the process. You know, a lot of people who were working for IBM, you know, yeah, who, who got laid off in their 40s, you know, when the IBM was in trouble in early 80s, mid 80s, you know, you know they got let go, you know, and the whole Hudson Valley was revitalized because all these people got destabilized and many of them became entrepreneurs. So, so, what, so what happens, uh, you have to you know, you know, start this journey, and it's a very lonely journey, because uh, you can't complain. Because everybody says, so who's asking you to do it? Yeah, who's asking you to do it? Yeah, 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 yeah. My wife you know, was, you know, would have been very happy if I went back and got the you know, same job again. You know. so, so you can tell her you know, that I had a very frustrating day today. So I left the job, you know, job without really having a you know, plan because I didn't want to hand around and worry about the deadlines and, and the projects and also you know, and not do the job you know, that I was being paid for. You know, so I just had to you know, you know, liberate myself you know, and you know, start thinking you know, you know, afresh you know, to, you know, what I should be doing. And uh, being an Indian was twice as bad because uh, the Indians were seen as a very good tatties back then. And there were no Indian entrepreneurs as role models. You know, there were no Indian uh, you know, guys who were in sales and marketing or finance. You know, you know, Indians were single dimensional, you know, damn good engineers and tatties. And that's the brand that we had developed. And uh, so when I went to talk to the people, you know, yeah, non-Indians uh, to get some advice, some mentoring, the first thing was, why are you doing something so unnatural for you guys? Why aren't you happy being so good at what you do? <laughs> you know, so there was a huge discouragement you know, you know, from them too, you know, simply because you know, the Indians were not meant to be entrepreneurs. You know, God gave you the brain to do this number crunching really well. Why aren't you happy with that? You know, the blacks play football and you guys do number crunching. <laughs> you know, so the, that kind of type trust you know, you know, was there. So, this was the golden age. You know, the entrepreneurship thrives uh, when there's a change. There's a rapid change. You know, rapid change you know, normally means uh, you know, the old order is being de you know, destabilized. You know, new order is yet to emerge. And, and the entrepreneurs are the ones who you know, grab opportunities, make the change happen. You know, you know, you know, just aside, you know, there are three types of people in life. And uh, you know, the people, you know, Change is always happening. People who fight change, uh, people who fight change, you know, yeah, they, they are swept aside by, by, the, by the tide of, of change. People who accept change, you know, and, and they become employees, you know, they, are, they, they survive. 
and the people who trust change, and they are the entrepreneurs. Yeah, they are the ones who are making the waves. Yeah, and they emerge out you know, as, as winners on the other end. So, 1981 fall, you know, IBM PC was introduced. And there was a, this you know, thing in the air that the world is about to change. You know, mainframes had given way to mini computers since super micros had happened. Now this new machine on the desktop, you know, you know by IBM, you know, Apple was there, but Apple was focused on hobby and, and home. And then there was this notion that the whole world of computing is about to change. You know, this uh, world will become, you know, have this distributed computing model, you know, where machines uh, on the desktop will do you know, some work and the machines in the back you know, will do heavy duty computing and they will somehow be connected. And uh, so I started to look at uh, that. I said, hmm, you know, that connection, you know, networking, you know, maybe, you know, maybe that's uh, the, uh, the opportunity I should look at. And while I was thinking about that one, you know, the Intel Digital and JRATS announced uh, something called Ethernet. And they published uh, this blue book, you know, which was specification of Ethernet. And they also announced that they will have chips ready in about three to four years. You know, to make this uh, Ethernet you know, become reality. And so I started to look at the Blue Book specification of Ethernet, and I said, hmm, yeah, maybe I can uh, yeah, design one of these uh, on, a, on a board using the available chips. Having started you know, at the dawn of uh, you know, IC industry, you know, when, when I started working as an engineer, you, know, you had AND dates, R dates, NOT dates, flip-flops, as a building blocks, you know, you had to build everything using those things. You know, the notion of, uh, you know, processor, or notion, notion of, of uh, you know, any large you know, you know, chip was a you know, distant dream. So, you know, we learned to design things, uh, you know, using those, those dates, those flip-flops. And I, you know, by the time, you know, this happened, you know, we had, you know, lot of, lots of, you know, MSIs, you know, medium state integration chips and, you know, LSI chips. And I started to, to stretch a design on the paper, and within you know, two, three hours, you know, I was able to stretch a design which I thought would sort of work. And, and it was about 30, 40 chips, you know, and I looked at the board sizes for 30 chips should be you know, easily fit on many of these computer buses. And now you know, we, are, we are onto something. I said, hmm, yeah, I, I have left my job now. It's been several months you know, since I left my job. So we used, uh, yeah, I found a couple of other guys as a, as, a, as, a, as a partners. And we built, a, we decided to build the prototypes. Yeah. And to do a network, yeah, you have to build three prototypes. Yeah. Yeah. Two, two nodes is not a network. Yeah. And so we built an, yeah, a board and it worked. Yeah, simply because I had the knowledge yeah, for, from uh, a previous generation of how to do the actual you know, logic design, system design. And, and build the uh, large things. So we had three to four year leads on the, on the marketplace. And uh, you know, you know, we sold about a million of those notes before the chips are uh, out you know, from Intel and, and uh, AMD and digital. And so, so this journey was a very lonely journey. You know, every step of the way, you know, there was discouragement. You know, and any time you fail, you know, as you know, the entrepreneurs have, a, have a, you know, more failures you know, then successes you know, along the way, you know, you have this rapid high highs and, you know, and lows in succession. One day you're on the top of the world and next day, you know, you fall up, you know, at the, from the you know, edge of the world, you know. And there was nobody you could talk to, you know. There was no encouragement whatsoever. And in our case, our team turned out to be, you know, sort of not very good. My, one of my partner turned out to be pretty dud, you know. And so there was internal problem also. Now, now you have you know, your team members who are not carrying their weight. You know, and and you know, so entrepreneurs have to become very brutal. You can't carry a dead weight. You know, it's a matter of survival. You, know, you are in a desert with a fairly limited supply of ration, and you have to you know, emerge on the other end. And if somebody is not able to carry his weight, you can't carry him out because you will die yourself. You, you know, so you, you become a little bit brutal you know, and ruthless in, 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 that, you know, in that way of thinking. And uh, 
So we finally had to let you know, one of these uh, uh, partners uh, draw. And as a matter of fact, uh, he was let draw by the board and investors, and, and we chose to not leave with him because, you know, yeah, 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 because I, you know, I wanted to make this you know, work really bad. So entrepreneurs uh, are born or made. You know, that thing you know, I get asked all the time. I know for sure, you know, and, and uh, I should mention this morning, that the fact your father was not an entrepreneur doesn't mean that you, know, you will not be an entrepreneur. And uh, but the entrepreneurial gene is there you know, if, uh, if there is such a thing, but it's very randomly distributed. And nobody can tell you that you're an entrepreneur or, or you're not an entrepreneur. You, know, you have to find out yourself. You have to find out yourself. You have to give yourself a... I tell people, you, know, you will never know if you are meant to be an entrepreneur unless you give it a try. Nobody will give you that chance other than yourself. And uh, you'll have to do it against all odds, against all discouragement. And uh, you know, if you do make it, yeah, you're set for life. Maybe I'll leave it at that one and you know, due to your day because uh, I'm getting those flashes, the other numbers, my time is running out. So I have five more minutes. Yeah, so maybe I, uh, yeah, yeah, we can have you there for five minutes. My, my nervous speech uh, is about 30 minutes and, and about 30 minutes of Q&A, but you know, this has been a tight spot, so. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, uh, you know, see, ups and downs are in the nature of the beast. Absolutely in the nature of the beast. You know, because, uh, yeah, yeah, you get an order from a customer, yeah, while you're on top of the world, you know, stuff can't be, you know, your, your guys can't build it and test it fast enough, and, you know, you can't get the yield, and you can't ship, and boy, it's a disaster. You know, so this happens, you know, you have to become very even-tempered. You can't let yourself be exuberant you know, when the things are looking good, and you can't let yourself down. You gotta just set it up. You know, that's, that's what it takes. If you have a team, if you get exuberant, your team will get twice as exuberant, and will start to dance and you know, not you know, focus on work. And if you're down, they think it's the end of the world, and they will start quitting. So, so you need to become very, very even-tempered. You know, you know, good news in stride, bad news in stride. Well, yeah, remember, you know, the, when you are on top of the world, you think you're on top of the world, the next step is always down, always down. And when you have hit the bottom, next step is always up. So you know, that's the way to, you have to think. Yeah. Please. Oh, absolutely. Oh, I should have mentioned that story. Yeah, yeah, I should have told you. Yeah, so, yeah, two things I want to mention. Entrepreneur, above all else, has to be a salesperson. That's the attribute, that's the skill you must have to succeed as an entrepreneur. You, know, uh, you can hire damn good engineers. See, you have to sell yourself to leave your job. You have to sell your wife to let you become an entrepreneur. You have to you know, sell your potential partners to come and work with you at a substandard submarket salary. You have to work harder than ever. You have to sell to the angel investors to part with their money and the VCs to give you money you know, on, on your Tata Mami story. Then you have to sell the products to the customer long before it's perfected, you know, you know. So you're always selling. You're always selling, so you'd better become very good at selling. So, so we, we went to see maybe 100 VCs, and the problem was same I mentioned earlier. You know, Indians, entrepreneurs, you guys don't know how to sell, you don't know how to manage, you guys don't know how to, you know, blah, 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 right? Yeah, they, they, they was, you know, they're not irrational. They are very rational people. You know, they haven't seen it happen. It's an unknown, unmeasurable risk. 
you know, yeah, they don't know how to factor that in, right? You know, VCs do take risk, but they want to quantify the risk, and you know, they want to understand the risk, and Indians were unknown risk. So one VC, after about 100 of them, looked at it and says, you guys have a damn good idea, damn good plan, you have a working prototypes, you know, but, you know, three Indians you know, with a you know, plan, you know, I don't know, you know, he said, then he says, ah, oh, maybe it's time to do one. Maybe it's time to do one. <laughs> and, and so our eyes and ears plucked up right yeah. He said, I'll make you one offer and you know, and you take your time and I don't want to you know, negotiate or anything. And I'll give you two million dollars for half the company. And yeah, we, before he was about, I you know, said, we will take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two million dollars was, uh, for half the company was a uh, very fair offer. Very fair, we thought it was a very fair offer. So, so we were funded because uh, one of the VCs thought it was time to do one. <laughs> and, and that VC really, you know, worked on water later, you know, because he disturbed Indian entrepreneurs in the valley. He made a hundred times his money. And yeah, yeah, he always reminded everybody, you know, he was the first one to bet on the Indians. Which is, uh, by the way, bragging rights are a big part of winning. Yeah. Anybody, anybody else? Well, taking company public is a uh, you know, un you know, describable you know, feeling, right? And uh, first of all, the banker treat you like a royalty. <laughs> you know, you know, I had to fly on a on a on a transport you know, from you know, London to, to New York because you know, the, our last meeting was in London, and we were supposed to go public the next day, and we flew into New York on a transport because you know, we wanted to get back early. And then we had to wait six hours in New York to get a flight to California. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, we had to fly yeah, planes, and it, it was unbelievable. And you know, the, when the company did it go public, your start opened at 12, and, and uh, they immediately shot up to 18. You know, so you're walking on water. Yeah. And you know, taking company public is a, is a rare honor. It's a rare honor because you know, if you go back and look at how many companies have gone public in such a date, the number is not that large. And between the public company CEO, you know, is a is a public trust, and uh, you know, I, you know, we felt very very good, especially being the first Indian. So I, I have two questions, and maybe I'll take those. Lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'll, be, I'll be dishonest if I will tell, you know, to tell you, you know, that uh, the ideas are enough. If John Bosch had not decided to you know, take risks on us and fund you know, Indian entrepreneur, you know, I'm not sure we would have been able to do it. Yeah, but you better be home when the Lady Lux smiles not at the door. You better be you know, home and, you know, and respond because uh, well, if Lady Luck decides to spit in your face, you know, your history, right? You know, so yeah, all the hard work is required, all the smart work is required, all the leadership skills are required, and you still need luck. Yeah, I, I, that hand has been up a few times. Yeah, I don't want to get into that debate. <laughs> I don't want to get into that debate. You know, everybody, you know, has to try. You know, man, woman, you know, who makes a better you know, entrepreneur? What is a better entrepreneur? I don't know. You know, I know some successful women entrepreneurs. You know, we are in process of funding an entrepreneur in the valley right now, and uh, she is nine months pregnant. Yeah, while we are writing term sheet, and uh, yeah, she has promised us uh, she will be out after mission for two weeks, and we'll be back to work. Yeah, so I see the commitment. I see a commitment there. Yeah, we'll be very happy to fund her. Yeah, but I don't want to say who's better. You know, whether Indians are better entrepreneurs, or whites are better entrepreneurs, or women are better entrepreneurs. They are, there is a equal opportunity out there. You know, and this opportunity is something for you to give yourself. 
The wives have to, to suffer with you. That's the problem. You know, uh, you, know you can't keep your, your frustration inside. You know, wives have a way of knowing that, right? The spouses have a way of knowing that. So, so they have to buy into it, right? You know, they have to buy into it. My, my wife you know, told me that she will not mind suffering herself, but she wants to make sure that our children don't suffer. And I said, yeah, yeah. if children start to suffer, yeah, uh, I'll quit. Yeah. And our children didn't suffer. Yeah. But children yeah, don't know they're suffering. Yeah, they're three, uh, my, my son yeah, was uh, yeah, <laughs> two and a half, and my dad, yeah, dad was five. Yeah. You know, all they need is yeah, yeah. a little bit of love, right? So there was a hand up here. Yeah. Our Indians are turning out to be wonderful entrepreneurs. You know, Indians are very fast learners, very fast learners. You know, Indians have a misfortune of having a very miserable government. You know, a very miserable government. You know. In spite of that, you know, they are succeeding in very large numbers. You know. And uh, uh, we just had an ad set in India about two, three months ago. You know, Red Bus, a 26 year old kid started Red Bus and it was just acquired by. Yeah, somebody, you know, we made 10 times our money. And yeah, we have very good, you know, troubles, you know, happening in India. I wish uh, the government was a little bit more purposeful there. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you.